Welcome back to another grand edition of the Beers. In this podcast, as always, the guillotine Rambo and the Tower Funky Power Come back at gentlemen. Jesus, dude. Fuck. How are we fucking doing? Get that demon out of here, yeah, dude. Get it out. We've been sitting on that for a while, huh? Well, this is podcast number two. Fuck! It's the first one we botched. Voice meter. Voice meter. Yeah, we, we you know, same old song and dance. We suck at this. Ah, my it's fucking pain blood pressure through the fucking roof. What, what gets me is that voice meter changes every fucking time. Like, I have to look and check that it's using that as our output device. Why does it change on its own? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because it fucking hates us. Because it hates us, yeah. It doesn't. I think it's the government. They don't want our fucking content online, dude, because it scares them. You know we're what I so mean? We're so fucking good. Though. We're so good. Yeah, they're afraid we're going to overthrow the government or something. We I might. We, we might. might. We, we might. We might. Beers and tears for... President. I think they're, yeah, they're probably scared that we have too many followers. We have more followers than fucking Uncle Joe. Yeah, yeah. Well, we definitely, we definitely articulate better. Speaking of Uncle Joe, doesn't Montana look like it's Joe Biden sniffing Idaho? Mm. (laughs) Holy shit, dude. Man. Yeah, you're onto something. That's like some Simpsons shit there. They predicted Uh, the uh, the future. uh. So our watchers and our listeners online, we have a... Map of the United States of America, all 50. And this is, uh, Jim Aronsky, this is your brainchild. Why don't you go ahead and explain it? So, opening days vary across the country for deer. So what we're going to do is every time there's an opening opening day, we're going to mark off the state that has the opening day. So California just opened. Ding, ding, ding. So California is open. What was it? Uh, My queen of the forest is... The 10th. The July 10th, apparently, California open for Blacktail. And if you are from one of these states, and our, and, and my, my princess's uh, research is wrong, let us know. Because it might be. But she quadruple checked, five times checked, six times checked, but it might be wrong. Yeah, so as the podcast go on, you're going to start seeing these states drop off, dude. Yeah. So they're yeah. fucking slaying deer in fucking Cali, dude. Eventually, there'll be, there'll be all 50 pins. Yeah. And if you are from one of these states and you indeed listen, send a picture of you and your harvest. I don't care if it's a doe. I don't care if it's a button buck. I don't care if it's a spike. I don't care if it's a groundhog. I don't care if it's a sparrow, a cardinal, a robin. I don't care. But if you send us a picture, it's got to be a Polaroid. If you ain't shaking that fucking picture, <laughs> don't fucking send it. It doesn't have to be a Polaroid. If it ain't a fucking Polaroid, it ain't going up. <laughs> if you're not shaking it, I don't want to see it. If you ain't shaking it, I don't want to see it. Shaking it more than twice, you're playing with it. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm always playing with it. <laughs> so, we'll start this motherfucker off the right way. And I've got a scenario for you, simple motherfuckers. Hey. And it's a good one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. You can only ever watch midget porn or Ooh. only ever shoot a three-pin sight. Which one you going with? Okay. Let me dive into this three pin sight. Is a is it a um, sliding three pin or is it just a, a fixed fixed three pin sight? It's the only thing you can ever shoot. Midget porn. You're watching midget porn All forever. Long. No, no other type of porn you can ever watch for the rest of your life. I'll work with it. Done. Midget porn. Three pin. Really? Yeah. Okay. Three pin. I mean, I can do 30, 40, 50. I mean, are you really going past 50? Good looking tack. <laughs> yeah, you That's could, true. No, at, yeah, at the tack, you're pretty much fucked. You could do a 30, 50, 70 or something. Like, dude, that would suck. Or you could have two three pins one 20, 30, 40, one 50, 60, 70, and swap them. And just give me the gangbang midget porn. Man, I'm I, going I, midget porn. I always just change my fucking answers like these. I'm swayed so easily by yours guys' answers. Midget porn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, midget porn for the yeah, win. I don't. That's all I watch anyway, so it's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> my my browser history is midget porn and pregnant porn. I mean, what are you <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking easy one for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to see what our freaks were. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> a midget girl running around sombrero and so that's fucking. Yeah, dude, there's some fine ass midgets out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate, don't hate. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> dude. 
Yeah. What is, what is America's slogan? Give me your needy, your hungry. <laughs> Please send them over here, dude. I'll take them. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, oh man. man. So another thing. Last week we talked about uh, the grizzly attack. Mm -hmm. A bear got a little teethy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. A little, a little bit. Uh, damn shame what happened. Uh, Terrible. It, so we got a little more information about it. Uh, last week, someone was killed in Montana in a town called Ovando. -O, Ovando, I guess that's how you pronounce that. Close enough. I wish I could. I wish we could see it on the map, but it, it's there's only like 50 people there, so I doubt it's on the map. Yeah. It's a real small town, but apparently three people were camping, and it was pretty intense. <laughs> as always, when you're camping. As always, when you're camping, <laughs> unless you got a camper or something. Yeah. But um, and a bear came, grizzly came. And it came once, and they, they got it away, and then it came back between, like, I think it was 4 and 5 a.m. Some bitch was hunting. Yeah, and attacked a lady. She was 65 years old, and, yeah, mauled her to death, killed her. Terrible. Damn shame. Uh, they did find the bear a couple days later, and they euthanized the bear. They killed it. I'm not sure how, but I know they used night vision to do so. Fucking that was that, that was in the article. I can't remember the details of, of how they did it. Hot six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They probably had some kind of rifle or something. And Seal Team Six went in there for that thing. Didn't yeah, they? Fuck yeah. Well, that's the thing about a bear when it attacks a human. It, it's it's kind of it's possible it might do it again because it finds how easy we are. Yeah, we talked about especially that, that sixty five year old lady, and especially because it came back twice. Yeah, I mean, people are we're fucking sorry motherfuckers when it yeah. comes to defending ourselves against the uh, predators bags of jello without the tools that we create yeah. you know what i mean if it weren't for that we'd be in trouble yeah. and working yeah. together and all that good stuff is how we've gotten here is our is our is our brain but when when it's mano a mano and you got a grizzly bear you're fucked i mean yeah when it's they, mano, mano a mano we are not top of the food no, chain no hell no mm. I wonder if they would have, um, I wonder um, if they tried to deter it the first time it came into camp. I would have killed it. Well, I think they did. They scared it off. It came into camp and they got it away somehow. Maybe it was bear spray or something. I don't know. The article didn't dive into it too much. That makes it even scarier. Man. So they, if, they scared that motherfucker and it came back. If yeah. that was me, I would have had a fucking forty five, and I'm putting that thing right between its fucking eyes. I'm not taking that fucking chance. I don't know. If I'm just there camping, like it ain't hunting season or something, I'm probably just going to leave. The first time I came, I was yeah. like, you know what? Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Let's pack up shop. Yeah, let's pack it up. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. If I'm there elk hunting or something, all right, I'm going to tough it out. I'll probably I probably wouldn't get a wink of sleep. Yeah. No. But these people, they're from Montana. They probably are familiar with bears. They probably, they're, you know, acclimated. They're, they're used to seeing bears, so they... They probably didn't panic, you know. Uh, the first time they got away, they're like, all right, no, no harm, no doubt, foul. But they went back to sleep and cost them a life. Uh, it's, it's a damn shame. It really is. I'm, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing it. You would have left? I would have left. Or yeah. I would have killed the grizzly. Yeah. Well, the problem is if you kill a grizzly bear and you can't prove that it was about to kill you, you're you're in some shit. Well, you well, we got cell video. phones. Like, come on, eat a dick. Like, someone, I'd be like, fire this up. Nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking about opening up fucking my video on my Snapchat yeah, that's true too. while having a fucking yeah. 45 in front of it and killing this yeah, thing. Yeah, like Adam Green Tree. You like, guys heard about that? Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that goes back to that whole thing. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. What? I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Oh, I understand Six Paul Bears. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, hey. I'd rather be alive and yeah. sitting in a courtroom, you know. This motherfucker, this motherfucker was hunting me, daddy. Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm taking a gun anytime I'm in bear country. Even if I'm <laughs> bow hunting, I'm taking a pistol. But that, hey, that doesn't even, that doesn't guarantee nothing. Yeah, anytime you're out there, you know, you're out in the ocean, you're in the shark's element. You're out in the back country camping, you're in that grizzly's element. He is the apex predator there, not you. You're on the food chain now when you step into these places. And you got to be aware of that, and that's the risk you take. God. Imagine. It's just a bad way to go. Oof. I mean, I guess, it's in my mind, it's a bad way to go from the standpoint of, like, man, that would have probably not been a fun experience. Mm. But it's, a, it's kind of <laughs> it's a, a good way to go because it's like, hey, that's a good death. You know, that's a death that you're... Mm. Your family will remember. You know what I mean? It's it the it, it's made it 
national news. Like it's it's definitely an interesting way to go. It's 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 cooler than dying in your bed. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of glamorizing <laughs> it, but like if I had to go, if I had a choice at 65, whether I could die of a heart attack or die of a grizzly attack, I think I'm gonna take the grizzly. If I'm 65, I want a 23 year old on top of me. I'm just yeah, die. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's never going to happen, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, dude? You can't get a 23-year-old now. Let's be realistic. I'm going to go to fucking show and tell, 65, get me a fucking 23-year-old stripper. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I feel like I, it's, there's worse ways to go. Yeah, but what does, a, what does a grizzly go for first on a human? Well, we we, we talked, talked about, about this, this last ass. week. The the fucking ass. News, dude. Yeah, I'm getting dude. fucking. It's gonna be ecstasy for the first twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I don't know. I look I, like Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant getting thrown around the woods with a fucking rag dog. Guy, eat my ass. Just kill me. Eat my ass. Yeah. Screaming. His, just kill me. His last words were, "Eat my ass." <laughs> I heard him screaming from a quarter mile away. He was screaming, "Eat <laughs> my ass." Leo, fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Did you ever see movie. that movie? It was great Holy movie. shit! I guess. Tom I, Hardy it was kind of slow. Man. It was slow. He never in talked. There, right? It had great. It had it had a lot of good stuff, and it, it it was a good movie. True story, wasn't it? It was based on a true yeah. story, but it was very very. Glamorized, Hollywoodized, yeah. Yeah. glamorized, yeah. It's Hollywood. What that's doing? that's what they do. Yeah. What you got to Leo's do? asshole was blown out. <laughs> his fucking bee hole was a foot wide. He went from the Titanic sinking in an ocean to getting his ass eaten out by a grizzly bear. Dude. He always gets his shit in his stick on these fucking stick, movies, dude. dude. What's eating Gilbert Grape, dude? <laughs> he's a retard and Gilbert Grape. Yeah. Revenant, he's fucking getting butt fucked by a grizzly. Old lady, Titanic, he's old fucking. Lady kicks you off a fucking door in the middle of the ocean, dude. Myth busted. They both could have fucking fit. They could have fit on the door. Uh, what, what was the one where he's a fucking millionaire? Uh, Wolf of Wall oh, Street that was a good one. goes to jail. That was a good one. I feel like that was. It was so easy for him. He's just playing himself, dude. That was the. That was probably one of his greatest movies. I think it was. That's his a, best. He's a great actor. That was the only one he got an Oscar for. Yeah, he's a great he's actor. Up. No, he got an Oscar for a Revenant. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. He always eats the shit in his stick in these fucking movies. Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? He's very. I think he's one of the one of the best actors alive. Yeah, but he's good. Yeah, he kind of does get shitty in the <laughs> stick. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit. But dude, just just that part to play with Margot Robbie, I'd have done that. Oh for free. man, oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Lord have mercy on I'd my soul. I cut my pinky off just to use her chapstick. <laughs> you shitting me, dude? <laughs> She is Cut my pinky so, so fine. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she is, dude. She is. Yeah. She's pretty attractive. <laughs> yeah. <Very> attractive. <laughs> and, and just the role she plays is just, oh, man. Oh, it's it, perfect. Yeah, she yeah. was good in that movie. Yeah, she was awesome. Movie. I still haven't seen the Harley Quinn stuff. No, me either. That's, apparently it was a shitty movie, wasn't it? Probably. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I haven't heard much about it. A bunch I, it, of... it couldn't be bad to me. I'd, I'd just be salivating the whole time. So what happened in that movie, Seth? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Margot Robbie. Yeah, Margot fucking, Robbie's fucking hot, my, though. My bed sheets are crusty, and I don't remember the rest. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, she's up there. She's she's definitely one of the most beautiful actresses in Hollywood. Uh, if, in my opinion, she's probably top three as of right now. I mean, who's who's better looking than her? Yeah. All time or like no, right now? Saying? Right now. Who's better looking than Margot Robbie right now? <laughs> Dude, Jennifer Lopez is a fucking smoke show. Dude, dude. she's like fucking I know. ninety. Dude, but I'm she a, is so hot. I'm a. I don't know. I don't really know how you say her name. S- Selma Hayek. Oh, oh dude. yeah, dude, she's hotter than Jennifer Lopez. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I know, agree. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Or, like, who are you saying again? J Lo. J Lo. Oh, Selma okay, Hayek's okay. way hotter. Yeah, Selma Hayek's hotter. Yeah. yeah, dude, her and Grown Ups. They fucking. Uh, yeah. Mm. Get you. Very, get you. Get very, you. very attractive lady. Very nice lady. Huh? Very, very nice lady. Yeah, very nice lady. Yeah. Uh, Mila, Mila Kunis, Kunis. She's really hot. Yeah, but she's kind of skinny. Yeah. My queen of the forest said Mila Kunis has like. She's got a really pretty face, and I like her like bubbly personality. Yeah. But she's a little skinny. A little for my liking. Yeah. Not yeah, saying. Me too. Not no, saying. No, no, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I just yeah. yeah she's like a. He likes Margot a. Margot Robbie's fucking pretty skinny too, but her she's just. She's just, just her face is just like she just got that that personality too, man. It it was that role that she played, where she just she knew she was hot and she just fucking used it. Like I'm not gonna wear any panties, daddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. Say stuff. hi to Rocco and Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I was yeah, I was like, Geez. what was that? What was that other movie she played in? Uh, With Will she Smith. Played it. Focus. Focus. She was hot in that too. I've never seen that. Me one. It's a good movie. Great movie. Huh. Focus. Okay, I'll look that up later. 
I'll look that up before I go to bed. Tonight. Mr. Scanner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great movie. Awesome awesome awesome. Awesome. Mm. Look like a fucking imbecile. Mm. Yeah, her her like accent that she gave on there. Yeah, she was she was awesome. Mm-hmm. She's a great actress. <laughs> mm, yeah, she is a great actress. Mm. Ronsky hands above the bar. <laughs> Hand check. Hand check. <laughs> He's good. Swearing. I can see him. Switching lanes here. Yeah. Get off the Mario <laughs> Robbie because we could talk. Let's go from ninety five to Route forty. Maybe we yeah maybe we could talk about hunting a little bit. <laughs> oh, is that what this podcast is about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, South Carolina DNR is in coordination with Clemson University. They're currently evaluating options for Sunday hunting on wildlife management areas in South Carolina. So that's a big win for South Carolina. That's yeah. that's likely to likely to go through. Shout out B Mac Montana. Yeah, Chris Armstrong. We got some boys down there. We John and I we used to work mm-hmm. our employer was based out of Sumter, South Carolina. So we spent quite a bit of time down there. Cool motherfuckers down yeah, there. Dude. A lot of good people down there. Dude, good barbecue. Bobby too. fucking Bobby Mac, my dude. Yeah, we talked we talked to him the other mm-hmm. week. Yeah, he's, he's doing great. My boy Chris down there. It's my fucking homie, dude. dude, dude. He's uh, we he's got him great. back on, yeah, bro. Chris is yeah, good he, dude. he was on the podcast. He'll, he's Early, gonna, he's gonna come up sometime get back with, on. within the next year or so. We've been we we always shoot the shit. So yeah, we'll, we had him we'll on him early. Up. Good guest. Yeah, yeah, he uh. He did some hunting last year. I don't think he he fared too well. He only got out a couple times. But he's a Waterville guy, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He loves he loves he loves his dog hunting. So it's crazy. Like hunters, like they like gravitate towards one thing. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just love. Well, I mean, you can love it all, but like you really love one yeah. species. Everybody's got a favorite. Yeah. Yeah, like Michael Waddell, he's a turkey guy, but yeah. he loves killing whitetail. But mm-hmm. he's he's that thunder chicken. Yeah, I mean, Ronell is like that too. Yeah. He really likes turkey. I think he said that was his. Other than elk, turkey's his favorite thing to to hunt. I don't get the elk thing, man. Oh, not the what? elk. The turkey. Turkey. I don't get the turkey thing. You grab me one too. Yeah, I'll take one. Uh, Around for the boys, please. Who I think the Bud Light. I'll take a Bud Light. Yeah. Give me the good stuff. <laughs> but the, uh, I mean, I don't know. I've never had a turkey in close. Yeah. But I think whitetail is my thing. Yeah, I just, I don't like, I, I want a big animal. Yeah. That's what gets me going. Yeah. You get more. Yeah. Uh, Same thing when I'm at the bar. I want something big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kill we one, know. You kill one deer, Matt. That's, that's, that's good eating. That's that's filling. Yeah, that's feeding, feeding you and the kids for a month or two. You know what I mean? You kill one turkey, it's a meal. Don't get me wrong. I think it'd be fucking awesome. You got a thunder chicken within twenty yards, and that fucking thing's at full strut and just fucking gobbling its face off. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, but there's nothing like having a fucking a white tail come within forty yards of your stand yeah, broadside, it's, it's the ultimate, man. and you stop it giving the old meh. Yeah, dude. Oh man, are you shitting me? I just, hey boys, it's coming close. What is it? Let's ch- let's check the date today. So Damn, we're recording we this on a Sunday. We have approximately one for us. Our season seven. starts two, three, four, five, six. We have seven weeks till deer season. For us, our deer season starts September 10th, and then Friday. Delaware starts September 1st. Which I'm I'm going to participate. I'm getting a dollar <coughs> license. I'm paying the extra money. I'm doing it. Me too, brother. I'm not. I'm going to go to Delaware. I'm going to smoke a big old big old broad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I'm going to wait on a buck here. Speaking of deer season coming, you got your son, Wyatt, a new bow. Oh, yes. Actually, that is... Yeah, so this week's been really eventful for us as an off-season week. We got the... I got a bow press in. Me and John both put new strings on our bows. And I took my son, White. He is eight years old. Took him to Autumn Sky Archery. Shout out, Autumn Shout Sky. Shout out, Nephew White. And White is getting dialed in. He's he's. Our goal is to get him a deer this year. He was so fucking pumped about oh, that dude. Bow. I walked in. Me and Sam walked in the house last night. He's like, look at my new bow. I was like, that's sick, dude. And it's a it's a sick little bow. Yeah, man. The, the it's a mission by Matthews, and it's it's the model's erratic, and that thing is sweet, man. Yeah. It pump it pushes that arrow out of there pretty <laughs> fast. I mean that that is uh it's, it's a nice bow. He'll be able to hunt with that for for quite a while. I can't believe it's so adjustable. It, yeah, I I think it goes from ten to seventy pounds. That's insane to me. Yeah. That's crazy. It's nuts. Well, so, you, I hope you'll be able to use that really? till. That's what I told him. I said, honestly, 
your size is going to because he's a big boy he's going to probably be too long in draw length before he even gets to 70 pounds yeah where do you get that size from the milkman (laughs) 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 on my dad's side i got a a lot of uh a lot of big dudes i got cousins all my cousins are pretty much over six foot like i got the shitty end of those that gene pool yeah man you were sawed off bastards yeah i got length in other areas so it's fine (laughs) do you though your toes do you though your toes i don't know (laughs) do you though your toes are pretty weird looking (laughs) your toes are pretty long (laughs) i'm like a fucking monkey dude i can fucking i can shoot a pistol with my toes (laughs) But yeah, why he he was so excited. Yeah, man, he's stoked. He he loved it. He wanted to he wanted to keep shooting. And I was like, it's getting late, son. You know what I mean? Blah blah. And then he was like, well, can we shoot tomorrow? I was like, yeah, we can definitely shoot tomorrow. You know Hell what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, I just yeah. I love it. I'm living vicariously through him, and it's, awesome. it's so tough, man. And he was getting a little frustrated at at Autumn Sky with the peep sight, like because it's mm-hmm. it's it's tricky, man. You forget how long it. But he's like, I just I can't get. Look through the peep side. I just want to shoot it. Like, just look. I was like, son, you can't do it. And he was like, all right, okay. I was like, just relax. Take your time. I was like, son, anything in life that is, is worth doing is worth putting your time into. Nothing that is, is any good, you're going to get good at fast. Anything that is, this will give you, you're always going to be able to get better at this. You're mm-hmm. never going to master it. But that's that's what's beautiful about it is this is something that you can do forever. You can always get better at it. You can You can get good, but you can never be, you can never master it. You know what I mean? You can always get better at bow hunting. At shooting a bow, at archery, it's an endless pursuit. So was he trying to instinctively shoot it? Yeah, he wanted That's to like awesome, instinctively dude. shoot it. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, but you, you got to, you know. You gotta no, but like, that's hunt. awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of want to get back into that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I learned how to shoot. And I think, and I think, here's my opinion. If you're getting into archery, I think you should learn how to instinctively shoot before anything. Really? Yes. So you... So you know the the path of an arrow. Yeah. That's how I learned. Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm a pretty good archer. Yeah. I just think it's the way to go. I, that's interesting, and, and I don't I don't disagree necessarily. I'd agree with John on that one. Yeah. I th- I think like it's almost like the show me what you got deal. Like someone first starts golfing or swinging a base, show me what you got. What do you got? And yeah. you just then you, then you kind of critique and tweak from there, yeah. and kind of try to work towards. Everyone shoots different. Everyone's everyone's different. Yeah. You just I, try to work with kind of what they're working with. I remember to this day, my dad and his buddies, twenty five years ago, shooting their their new at the time compound bows, which were just trash. <laughs> yeah. In, in today's standards, but I was shooting with a little recurve, and I'm like aiming this little recurve. Like way up in the sky, trying to hit this target, and I always hit the target. And I was out shooting these freaking old clowns. They were probably drunk out of their minds, but it was just so much fun, so much fun. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you, but with the given the amount of time that we have to, before season, I wanted him to to learn to use the peep. Absolutely. Oh, of course. Oh yeah. Yeah well, yeah yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I want I'd love to take <coughs> I'd love to see him be able to draw enough weight. By opening day and take him out opening day with well, he's twenty twenty seven. He's a little pounds? over twenty now. No, no, he's he's a little over twenty, like twenty two, twenty three. Okay. Well, he's got to get to thirty before he can. And then once he can draw thirty comfortably, he's got to be able to shoot accurately. Now here's an even bigger question: Are you going to give him the proper release to get that surprise shot, or are you just going to? That's how I've been teaching him. Really? Have you? Yeah, I've been Good. teaching him to wrap your finger around the trigger and pull through it. Okay. Which is actually a little easier to do with his bow because it's got a little more spongy of a back wall than, mm-hmm. like, say, a, a, a like our bows do. Yeah. Speaking of spongy back wall, you traded a. I traded my B three. Let's hear this story. Release huh. on Facebook on a on a on a page, and I I wanted to try. The uh, what is it called? Nah. Silverback. Silverback. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to try it because it's cool. It you have to draw through it. It's not a hinge. It's a back tension. So it's by how much weight you actually pull through. So you come to full draw, you let off the safety, and then you have to pull and add more weight to the release just to get it to shoot. So it's cool. It it, it it's a tool <coughs> to teach you how to shoot. And I was like, I want to try this. I want to. I just want to play with it. And yeah. I got it. And it's like. It's absolutely useless to me because <laughs> it's like I, I already know how to shoot, and it's just it's. I'm not I'm not saying like I can't maybe get better from it or something, but I just don't see 
it doesn't a, help me at all. It's just a training tool. Yeah, you're it's, not it's, hunting with it. <clears throat> it's 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 that's exactly what it is. You can't hunt with it, and even for just a training tool, like I don't know, I'm not getting much from it. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna trade it again. It's it, it's cool. I think it's great for somebody who who's learning how to get a surprise shot. But I, I, it's just not doing anything for me. I mean, you just get the full draw and you got to pull through your shot. It's like, okay, well, that's what I do with every other one of my releases. But I can execute better with a hinge mm-hmm. than I can with that. So I, I don't, I don't see a use for it. And but if you're new to archery, yeah. and like the goat says, Levi Morgan, these back tension releases, they're they're not of any use in these new age bows because in in the, in, in, in like. The early 90s or the late 90s, early 2000s, they might have been better because the back walls were spongy. Right. But nowadays, the back walls are so just sort of like Solid. a brick. It falls yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. You can't pull through it. Yeah. There's no pulling through it. There's no pulling yeah. through it. It's not get, You have no give. <clears throat> You're just pulling like a motherfucker yeah. to get the bow to shoot. Yeah. I just, yeah, it, it, it's cool, I guess. Yeah. I don't well, I don't see much use for it, honestly. Yeah. I'm going to... Let me go uh, grab the charger because this thing's about to fucking die. Oh fuck, dude! Oh, we can hold the fort down, dude. So uh, yeah, I was I was paper tuning my bow today, and I had the old hingey out because I was getting a weird tear, a weird left knock tear. <laughs> left or right knock tear, but I got the hinge out today to get that surprise shot, and it and it corrected it, and it got a perfect bullet hole, and it was it's wonderful. So if you're like if you have a weird tear. And you're trying to adjust, like your sight, and you keep getting that tear. It's probably your release hand that is. Yeah, that, you gotta pull that, through. Yeah, like you might you might just be punching the trigger and moving your hand out right. Yeah. So I, I pulled out the old hingey, and I made the old hingey really hot today, and I I'm starting to like it, dude. I love the hinge, but I'm a I'm a click guy. I love the click. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I shot a hand release for the first time. It was last week or the week before? Last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks yeah, ago? A couple weeks ago, I think. A week or two ago. And it is different. Yeah. Holy shit, it's different. I don't like yours. I don't like this. I don't like late. You don't like late, the safety? No. I like the safety for the draw. Yeah. I do too. But I also Especially like to shoot mine super hot. Super duper hot. Yeah. Yeah. So for mine, it's like even knowing how to draw it, I. I like it so hot. I can I can punch it, drawing it if I'm not drawing perfect. Which when I'm hunting, I don't want that possibility. Yeah. So I like having the safety for hunting. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, as soon as you lay off the safety, it's gone. It shoots. Yeah. 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 Cause I get once I get anchored in, I get dialed to where I want to be, and then I let off that safety, and it takes me very little movement. Yeah. In order to forget that release to fire. Yeah, I was coming to full draw today with my hinge, and. I was just barely easing into it, and it would click, and then I knew to the anchor in, and bang! Yeah, and it just gave it. It's just a beautiful thing. Uh, I, man, uh, the click thing is a whole preference. I mean, some people like it, some people don't. For me, I don't like it. It gives me target panic. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that click, and I'm like, Jesus, Bob. <laughs> that was my thing too, but I had it so cold that was giving me. Tar- I was pull, 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 click. Ah! Mm-hmm. And once I made it more hot, I was like, eh, "Okay, this is I like this a lot better." Okay, yeah, I I, I can see it. I get yeah. it. Well, Tate's wrong. Yeah. There's no wrong, wrong way. There's no. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <Tubbs. laughs> Fucking. <laughs> uh, I got a uh, I got a shooter pass for us. What do you guys think about mullets? Mullets? Did I had one when I was in third grade? Great. You, you, you gonna shoot it or you gonna pass it? Uh, shoot it. You like it? I'd have, I'd have a mullet right now. Fuck yeah. I'm gonna pass it, and this is why. It's almost like a uh, the trend gimmicky, right now. trendy thing right now, Dude. which is not cool. Yeah. Not to call you out, but you kind of have the uh, male pattern baldness going on. Yeah. I'm bald. You should do the Hulk Hogan. No, the Gallagher. Smash a watermelon, dude. Well, yeah, Gallagher. Hulk Hogan's better. Just do the fucking mullet around the side. That would look so sick. With the ball cap on? What? With the... Hell yeah. 
you're fucking out of your mind. He's just trying to embarrass me. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's just trying to embarrass me. He'll be awesome. He wants you to do yeah, it so he can laugh. Die a fucking absolutely. bleach blonde. 100%. <laughs> I think it would look sick. I don't know. I'm back in the gym, dude. I might look like the Hulk here soon, dude. I don't know. Hulk bro. Hogan, bro. Hulk Hogan. He was a fucking millionaire from wrestling. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass. I'm not a big mullet fan. I'm, I agree with you, Ronsky. I think it's... 95? Mullet me up, bitch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I had Travis Tritt. Cool. All the fucking OG oh, country God. singers had it. Like, yeah. yeah. I got nothing against the mullet. Don't get me wrong. Nothing against them, but I just feel like it's like the wrong reason. Now. It's like, come on, yeah. It's they like you're trying to strong. over. You're trying to overdo it. It's like we get it. You like bush light. Relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? Easy, 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 killer. Yeah, they definitely came back really strong. Yeah, and some people can pull them off. They look good, but I just I'm not into it. It's not for me. Jer- <laughs> Dude, Jared Allen rock one for his whole career. Oh, yeah. Do you guys uh, follow Stale Cracker on Instagram? No. Oh my god! Sounds great. I'm sitting next, to, next yeah, to, I'm sitting cracker. Next to two stale cracker. <laughs> he's from Louisiana. And he's he's just a, he just cooks like awesome shit, and he's got a mullet. He's so cool. Look him up on Instagram. Stale cracker. Stale cracker. Shout out. Okay. Stale yeah, cracker. Let's gonna, get it, dude. I'm not gonna do it now, but I'll, I'll check him out eventually. You guys hear about that shit out in uh? What the fuck is that? I think Oregon. It's, yeah, it's Oregon. How do you pronounce it? Or- Oregon? Oregano. Oregano. That's I think you're right. It. Oregano. So Cam Haynes says it. Yeah, Oregano. Yeah. Cam Haynes an or- or- Oregon boy. Yeah, out Oregano. In, out in Oregon, they're... Oregano. Okay. All right. We'll go with Oregano, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's Oregano. I'm looking right at it. Um, I, can I can't read or write, but it says... <laughs> I, mean, I think it says Oregano. Uh, Oreg- Oregon. Something like that. The Oregon Trail. I can't, I can't get this fucking thing to load now anyway, so... It was uh, something 13. P13 or something? I'll look it up on the jury kit. Okay, I got it. Here we yeah. go. So, oh, never mind. No, I don't. No data available. Oh, Pay your cell phone. So, here, here's the deal. Out in Oregon, they introduced a bill that would essentially outlaw hunting, farming, ranching, shit, even rodeoing, anything that can be done with an animal that they see as being animal abuse. So this is a blatant attack on hunting, ranching, farming, our way of life. And it's super concerning for obvious reasons. Petition 13. Yeah, enlighten us, John. Give us a little more details about it other than what I just remember. Uh, it's a it's a video. They don't explain it on like they don't they don't write it out as a video. Yeah. So this guy, I can't remember his name. I think his first name is Michael, the guy who introduced the bill. And there, it's an it's an act on animal cruelty. They're trying to get it to where basically hunting, uh, anything anything you do like castrating a bull, uh, rodeoing, riding on them like that, like. Uh, farming, all that, anything you do with with cows or bulls, anything like that, it would be banned because it would be considered animal cruelty. Mm-hmm. And they introduced this bill, and I don't think it's going to pass. I mean, I, I think it's really unlikely, but it's just it's just concerning, and it's it's something. If you live in Oregon, you should definitely look into this and fucking petition against it or mm-hmm. whatever you got to do in your local legislature or whatever however you get involved i'd be all over that I cam mean, haynes will lead the fight in that he yeah. is yeah. yeah so it's just it's a scary thing but it's just a it's it it can happen in your state yeah it could happen here it could happen anywhere and that's that's why i think it, it's it's really important for us as hunters to be we're ambassadors for hunting every hunter you're an ambassador for this way of life you represent the whole and it's important for us to be ethical hunters in the way that we do it and it's important for us to understand why we do it and to do so in a way that is respectful to the game that we pursue Mm. i think it's important for all of us to do that and i also think it's important for all of us to try to recruit other people because the more of us that there are the harder it is to fight us the harder it is to outlaw the hunting the harder it is to make our way of life go away because if as many hunters as there are in the U.S., if each of us just gets one other person to hunt, I mean, we can, in a year, we could double the amount of hunters that there are. And a lot of people get that idea, like, oh, I don't want other people out in the woods, or then it's harder to hunt, or then the, the laws change and all that <laughs> stuff. But how many of these people out here are my favorite kind of hunter? A fair weather hunter. Yeah. They only get out there on a rifle. They only get out there every once in a while. And those are my favorite kinds, because they're advocates for hunting. 
They support what we do. They're always going to vote the way that we want them to vote. And they're not out there killing a whole lot of stuff either. So it's like, and and even if you are, I'm 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 good with that. I'm okay with that because this is this is a way of life that yeah, not everybody can do it. It's not sustainable, but we can get a lot more people to do it, and we can have other people to be advocates for what we do and to support this. And I think that's an important thing. So if you know somebody that might be interested in hunting, don't be afraid to reach out or and maybe you know help somebody out you know get them involved get them hunting take your kids hunting if you have children try to make them hunters i'm not saying you have to force your kids to do something i'm not no advocating that at all (laughs) no force them you take them fucking out in the woods you make them like it (laughs) how are you doing it you're doing it but it's 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 a good thing we want this thing to stick around and i don't in my lifetime ever want to see it be jeopardized like this shit out in oregon is fucking asinine do you have something no uh well so I have a very di- diverse group of friends. A lot of my friends are uh, grad students and whatnot. And gays, a lot of gays. <laughs> but they um, literally, all I do is I work and shoot my bow and hunt. That's Outside of that, I think that goes for all three of us. I mean, we work out and shit, but Seth more so, just all that crazy MMA Not shit he's doing. We I'll all be, got different I'll hobbies, but for the most part, it. really all we do is fucking shoot our bows and hunt. And you'd be amazed, like talking to a group of people that never hunt in their life and you're just talking to somebody oh, what do you do in your spare time well i shoot my bow and i hunt and they're just like man i've always wanted to do that yeah like i've always wanted to try i'm like what's hold, what's what's holding you back from fucking getting out there and trying and it's just like we are the the we're the window for them to jump through you have yeah. to embrace that that's a that's a good analogy right? for the you window you never hunt before let's fucking do yeah. it well hunting is one of those things where <clears throat> it's it's largely patriarchal yeah. Most of us get it from our fathers or a some kind of father figure. It's not something, it, it's such a daunting task to jump into on your own. I mean, just think about archery in itself, how difficult that is when you don't have anyone to help you. Mm-hmm. And then add another element to it, pursuing some kind of wild game. It, it, it's, no, it's, it's so complicated. There's so much to it. If, if you don't have someone to kind of help you along, you, most people, you're just not going to do it. Yeah, opportunity. That and that's why it, it's people need people. We yeah. need each other to, to to network with each other and to learn from one another. Like imagine being brand new to this and like, okay, I'm gonna do it this year. I'm gonna go out in the woods and I'm gonna try to kill an animal. And you go out in the the woods. Say you just try for a season and you go out all season and you just get in a random tree because you have no idea what's going on and you you don't see a fucking thing all season. How? debilitating is that going to be yeah. that you've never you didn't even see an animal yeah most people that try it by themselves probably just quit yeah you need you need somebody you need yeah. some kind of guidance what's good now is that you have the fucking internet the fucking beers and tears podcast. the beers and tears podcast this is your one stop shop for everything you need but seriously the, the the internet we live in an age where knowledge is abound and experience is non-existent everybody's an expert on everything because it's set their fingertips on a phone mm. and you can use that to get into hunting even if you have nobody which i think is a good thing and then you can get that experience on your own you have to get out there and do it but it's only going to get you so far it yeah. really is man like to have somebody there to show you what you're mm. looking for and to be able to ask them questions and get responses yeah. you can't get that stuff off of, off of uh youtube channel you I mean, know what i mean look, look at ryan i mean it, it was his first year hunting yeah and he shot at two deer two deer killed one it took me fucking 10 plus years to kill an animal yeah so he had a uh just a fast track to this yeah. shit of be, being around people that know how to do it yeah you know even if we're we're not anything special at it either but Speak we can <laughs> but we can we can guide others along the path you know what i mean and that that's something that we should all be able to we should all give back yeah we should all give back i think that's that's uh, every hunter should give back i can understand when someone's like i don't i don't want any more people in this sport i don't don't want my spot wrong jeopardized i get it i get it it's the wrong mindset though it is like you're saying it is the wrong mindset i but i i do get it i get it i understand Mm -hmm. it like fuck you this is my spot Public but, land's already tough. Yeah, I I get it, but like you're saying, Jeremy, it's it's the wrong mindset. You're gonna kill. You're gonna kill us. Yeah, yeah like you that. are killing that us. kind of that kind of mentality is 
detrimental to hunting as yeah. a whole. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a dying sport. Well, it might not be. I think it's coming back. Joe I Rogan is. Joe Rogan does a great job of. Uh, I think promoting he's, it. I, I, I think he's saying. I'd love to see any kind of like economic studies that they've done on that. Some analytics on yeah, that. Yeah, but I bet he has contributed uh, unimaginably to the sport. Maybe not just hunting, but archery altogether, yeah, and so, and western hunting in particular yeah. more so than than what we do, like whitetail, because that has blown up in the past couple of years. And even hunting, like this last year, like the pandemic, just people not having the ability to do things that are fucking useless anyway like fucking going to theme parks and movie theaters and ugh, nothing wrong with those things but that's 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 artificial fucking fun that stuff's it's it you're not going to remember going to oh man that one ride was like like uh, it's cool while you're doing it but it, it, it's it's like it's that that just lamest form of fun what's fun is is get is is what we do mm-hmm. uh, is getting out in the woods and and the the whole experience of hunting i mean that is that is it can be miserable. It can be suffering. It can be a lot of things. But <clears throat> whenever you look on, back on it, you always look back on it with some kind of reminiscence and and fondness. Yeah. I mean, it, it's and and you can remember almost every single hunt that you go on. I mean, it that is a valuable kind of fun. It's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I I killed ten deer this past season. Ten, and I can rattle off. Where I was, what happened, what I was thinking on every animal yeah. this past season. Yeah. Hey, you're going to remember this shit for the rest of your life. You can't make that that kind of stuff outside of the natural world. No. I just I think it is, is the purest form of entertainment, and it's it's it goes so far beyond that. To, to call it entertainment is, yeah, is it doesn't even do it a justice. Yeah, I don't like calling it entertainment. It's, 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 it's a way of life. Yeah. It's yeah. my life. Yeah. It's... it's it's a, it's a passion, man, and I'm gonna I'm gonna set a goal for myself this year. I'm gonna take so I've I probably half a dozen people that I've talked to about hunting that are interested in hunting. My goal this year is to get one person in the woods that's never hunted before. Hell yeah, that's all I like. I'm that. gonna set that goal for myself. And like my bow, I gave away my first bow to a good friend of ours that's never bow hunted. Hmm. Like I could have kept that. That's a special bow to me. You should have kept my, it. I, I killed my yeah. I killed my first two deer with that bow. Archery kills. Hmm. And <clears throat> I gave it away. But what would it have done? It sat in your sat in exactly. your closet. But anyone else about sentimental? I'm gonna hang it up, and look at it every day. Like mm-hmm. it's no, yeah. uh, that bow is gonna do more good and someone for, else for this for what we do in someone else's hands than it wouldn't mind. And you're different because you're a lefty. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I, that's so unique. I ran across a good friend of ours, and he, he was like, "Dude, I'm interested in that. Just take yeah. it." Nolan, shout out, yeah. Nolan. You take take this fucking bow. If 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 it gets if it's that's a step in the right direction, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and we can all do that. We can all do that. Maybe, I, maybe you get a I'm new not bow. Giving away my bow. <laughs> yeah, well, look, man, I, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for you two. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's the same thing. Like, I, I'm always trying to do that. I'm always trying to get people hunting. Like, your son. Yeah, my son. I got a, a lot of my buddies that I. And I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to like take credit for it, but like. I want to get people involved. Well, you in should it. brag I'm, about that. That's a good I, thing. I, I like getting people involved. I love and you enjoy teaching, doing it with them. Yeah, I love teaching. I love I love learning from them because I, I you I feel like one of the best ways to learn is to teach. Like if you know about something, you can teach a little bit about it. It, it can help you to learn more about it. Absolutely. Because you have to. You're forced to look at it through different perspectives. You're forced to answer questions that maybe you haven't thought of. In you're a for, while. Yeah. Or it, even if you have thought of them, it's been a long time since you have, so you have to revisit this stuff. And it's a great learning tool as, as, as someone who's trying to get better themselves. I, I just, man, it is, it's one of them things, man, where you can't, no matter what you put into this, you'll always get more back from it. I don't care what you put into hunting. It's going to return that. It's always going to give you more back. You know what I mean? It, and it's gotten me through a lot, man. Like, fuck. Like, I, I got couple years ago just going through a divorce like getting out in the woods man that was like my sauce it was it was a tough year you know what i mean but like it, it's 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 all made it's all made me persevere and go through it with it you know what i mean hunting is just a way of life and it it, it, it the more you dive into it the more it's going to give back to you the harder you push the harder it pushes back and it, it's 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 always it's a constant it's a constant it's unchanging it is this is this is how it works and it man it's gonna work it as hard as you're gonna work it 
And if, if you put the work in, it's going to pay off. And sometimes you get those times where it's like, man, I'm not seeing nothing, or it's really hard, it's cold, it's miserable, it's you're, it's these long sits, and you're. And sometimes you can go the longest time without seeing a deer, deer, and it's absolutely unrewarding. But that that kind of stuff, the stuff that you have to persevere through and, and is is challenging, that is the best kind of 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 time you can be spending doing anything that is it's it's giving you such a a return on your investment into the time that you put into this man. when it finally it's, pays off it's making it's, you a better person while it's doing it yeah. too because it, yeah it's so many values that go with patience hard work it's, effort all that and stuff you, you it, it sounds so corny can, it sounds so it sounds it, no, so it corny. does it does but, but it's, but it, it's, it does. it's so it's true, true. <laughs> it, you can learn so much from this man and it makes it's made me a better man yeah. from being just being a hunter and 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 the growing that i've done the growth that i i, I have done while hunting like you, you go through these stages as a hunter and it's like it's almost like the the stages of a man that you are and as you as you grow as a man you're your interaction with this way of life changes too and and what you want from it becomes different as you develop as a as a person mm-hmm. so you, you might start off with you know what i mean just want those want kill this, everything and, yeah just killing everything and you're just like <laughs> and then and then it goes to change and then and hey dude maybe even one day it gets so i just i don't even want to kill anymore maybe i just want to watch them maybe i just like being out here in the woods maybe that's I just, how uh, that's how sam's dad is he doesn't want to kill him anymore he's yeah, gonna watch you him. just love him so much so and it, it's yeah. There, there. It's, it's just, man. I, I feel bad for people who don't hunt because they're, they're missing out. They don't know what they're missing. They really don't. And like, it. I don't want to. Maybe it's come full circle, but, but like my dad, he's kind of like, just kind of fallen out, and like he doesn't hunt anymore. He hasn't killed anything in years, and I. It, nothing would make me happier than to take him into the woods and put him on a deer and yeah. just let him kill something. Yeah. That would probably. That would probably be a better feeling than me killing the biggest buck I've ever killed. Yeah. Just to, uh, it would be so awesome. Make it happen. I could make it happen. Make there's, it happen. There's no, he's retired. There's no reason why I can't make it happen. Yeah, we do have to make it happen. That's a good deal. That's that's a good goal for you this year. You know what I mean? Runsky, you, your goal is to get somebody else out in the woods. Maybe that should be your goal, John, is to get your dad to get, get your dad a deer. That's my goal, I've got my own. As as we we all said two things that last week that we wanted to get better at as hunters, by ourselves, by ourselves, and I think all of us and I we've all said it unbeknownst to ourselves have all one way to give back to hunting. You want to get somebody else into hunting. Absolutely. You want to get your dad a deer. You want to rekindle that fire in him that you know mm-hmm. is there. And I want to get my son a deer. Oh yeah, there you go. We all have three objectives to do it in a way that we can give back to the hunting community. I think that is. That's fucking awesome, man. And if we could all do that, I mean, hell, that's a successful year to me. <clears throat> and even if we're not, as long as we just give her hell, that's all that really matters. Yeah. I mean, spending time in the in the deer stand with your son, how yeah. cool is that going to be? That's, that's, that's Watching priceless. Watching the squirrel. Priceless. And, and the same with you and your dad. Because you know what, man? You never know when it's your, your last hunt with your pops. Don't say that. I'm not Jesus saying Christ. he's not that old. But, hey, man, you never know. And, and it could be you going, not him. You know what I mean? Life is is ephemeral. You don't know it's when it's fickle bitch. when it's in and out, dude. I mean, so you got to enjoy them while you got them. And those are the things that I feel like, say, a loved one passes. You're not going to remember about the time you went to fucking Dorney Park or Hershey Park and went and rode on those roller coasters, but you're going to fucking remember those hunts you went on together. You're going to remember those yeah. times you suffered together <laughs> out freezing your ass off in the pouring rain and it's 40 degrees outside. That's the stuff that you recall with fondness. The best memory my the probably the best memory I have with my dad is dragging that eight point buck out of the woods. He's a, he smokes up two packs a day, and it almost killed that old man <laughs> dragging that fucking 200 pound deer out of the woods. Yeah, it was an awesome memory. Yeah. That was a great experience, though. It's awesome. And I feel awesome. This is a good. This is a good thing to talk about. We started this podcast for that. Yeah. We love archery to death. Love hunting to death. We could fucking not have this podcast and just talk like this without these mics in front That's of us. That's what we do. The goal yeah. is to fucking expand and fucking make the hunting community fucking expand and fucking get people connect. engaged and connect with people, man. It's just we don't we don't talk that enough. Yeah. yeah. The 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 media devilizes us to an extreme and like we have to be the the light at the end of the tunnel yeah because there isn't enough of it we have 
yeah, this is this is what we have. This is what we got. It's us. It's it's and hey man, it's a beautiful fucking thing. Daddy, you, I'm excited. I it this this season. It's gonna be the best I, ever. I relish every moment of anticipation, but at the same time, it can't come fast enough. Seven weeks. We said the yeah. same thing about the tack, and boom, it was there. And it's a, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. I'm kind of glad there's there's an off season. And for other than the logical reasoning that there needs to be one, but just for the fact that it makes you appreciate it that much more. You know what they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. it is the same deal with hunting, man. Just the time off that forces you to not be able to do what you love, it just makes you love it that much more. Well, we loved it. I feel like we loved it all year last year. We grinded mm-hmm. to the last yeah. day. I didn't I didn't even get tired of it last year. And no. a lot of times that by the late season, I'll start getting tired of it. I'll be like, all right, yeah. <laughs> I'm burned out. The past couple of years, like mid-December, I'm like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. But now we went to the last and it, day. It, it, yeah. it brought us closer as friends. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. And it, it's... It, it, there's there's so many benefits to it. It's endless. It's endless. You can you can you can talk about them. and even 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 the podcast just talking about hunting, just doing this. It, it holds us accountable. It holds us accountable to our listeners. You know what I mean? And it, it makes us better in that aspect as well as Jesus, Jesus fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. It uh you know I don't know. I feel like I just wish everybody could understand the impact that hunting has had on my life and I, everybody that I know I want to share it with them you know what I mean it's almost like I'm a fucking a vegan or a crossfitter I just want to tell them all about it you know, <laughs> you know what I mean but at the same time I'm not a fucking asshole either so I don't force <laughs> it down people's throat but that's why we have this medium right because if you want to listen it's here you know what I mean? And anyone who shows any interest to me I'm telling them about it yeah. you know what I mean? like if you ask my dad why did he get me into hunting? His number one name. His number one answer every time is gonna just to keep me out of trouble. Yeah. And it sure as fuck did. It worked. And the times that I strayed away from hunting is the times I got in trouble. Yeah. Because I went like two, three, four years there where I just didn't hunt. Yeah. And that's when I was in the most trouble of my life. And yep. then when I, once I got back into it, I wanted to hunt and I didn't want to do anything else. Yeah. I wanted to not jeopardize my hunting. Mm. So. It's, I think it's really valuable for kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if if a kid if if a boy's in a tree stand or a girl's in a tree stand, hey, look, Ted, she, it's it's real hard to get in trouble. Ted Nugent, when you're out in a tree stand. Ted Nugent has a great. He says, "Take your kids hunting, so you won't have to hunt for your kids." Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. I like that. I got yeah. one. You ready? This ain't no hobby. It's no, not. It's this not. ain't no fucking hobby. For some people, it is, and this is life. Those people, it's good for That's them. That's okay. I love. I love those people too. Shout yeah. out Kevin Kisner. I stole that from you. This is this is my life. This is all yeah. I fucking think about. I close that window. <laughs> yeah, we're getting fucking <laughs> pterodactyls in here. That mosquito flying this motherfucker like <laughs> crazy. Fucking fucking smoking a stug around out there. Yeah. All right. Well, this is podcast number two we've recorded tonight because the first the one we better, got watched. The better of the yeah, two. It was, it was definitely better. better than the first one. I think we got uh, got the got twist. our the motion. Hey, a Rolling Stone grows no moss. <laughs> they got me in tears. <laughs> we got Sam choking up back there. A princess. Uh, yeah, we got a little deep on this one, but you know what? Hey, sometimes I think it's good because we go we go through both ends of the spectrum. A lot yeah. of times we'd like to do a, lo- a good ha ha he joke around a lot because that's what that's what we wanted to give to the hunting community is a comedic relief. Yeah. But every once in a while, I think it's good to drive home what this is all about what it's really about yeah yeah and we appreciate the fuck out of you guys out of all you listeners give us a subscribe and a like tell somebody else about the podcast let them listen hey man it might make them a hunter and if it does that's a good thing you're doing we don't want just subscribers we want people to listen to our fucking message we want hunters absolutely Yeah. yeah we want to meet you guys too we want you to participate so if you kill a fucking animal you let us know we'll put you up on this board we'll make it fucking happen yeah. Polaroid yes Polaroid only <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in to the Beers and Deers podcast with yours truly Seth Gills the guillotine JP motherfucking Rambo me that is. yeah I'm pointing at him <laughs> and Jeremy motherfucking Runsky the tower power we will see you guys next week Thank you. Bye.
Come back soon. <laughs>